Hey, how's everybody doing? Uh, uh, so my name's James, and uh, I'm half a ginger. Not, not a full ginger, just half, but uh, it's still all right for me to make ginger jokes without it being considered offensive. You know, sort of like how if you're half black, you can still use the N-word without getting shot. I would consider myself the uh, daywalker of gingers. You know, kind of like Blade, except I don't know martial arts. You know, I can go outside during the day, but only for short periods of time. Otherwise, my skin just bursts into flames. <laughs> That's all right, though, because uh, we gingers do all of our uh, soul stealing at night anyway. Yeah, for every soul we snatch, a ginger loses its virginity. Uh, so I have a photographic memory, which uh, works out really well for comedy, because uh, I never forget any of my jokes. But uh, I also can't forget any of my girlfriend's phone numbers. Uh, and I drink a lot. <laughs> Just last weekend, uh, you know, I was wasted. And uh, I called up my ex-girlfriend, Rachel, and I was like, Rachel, why'd you break up with me? I'm still in love with you. I got her voicemail. Uh, <laughs> next day, I get a call back. It's Rachel. She goes, Jimmy, it's been 15 years. We never even kissed. Get over it. <laughs> it's tough. Middle school was a tough time for me. I was a scrawny ginger. <laughs> I remember the first time I got beat up. Fucking bullies. This girl had like 60 pounds on me. <laughs> she sat on my chest and started punching me in the face. You know how hard it is to go home from school and tell your dad you got beat up by a girl? I remember another time I got pants in gym class and uh, I know the normal reaction is uh, when you get pants, pull up your pants as quickly as possible, but I'm a grower, not a shower, so. I just closed my eyes and got a boner. <laughs> I had to show all the girls, it's bigger than you think it is. <laughs> so uh, I got the uh, new iPhone recently, and uh, I really like that uh, new Siri technology. It's great. Uh, but I'm a little concerned that Siri might actually be too smart. Yeah, the other day, I asked her for a blowjob, and it goes, keep dreaming, Ginger. <laughs> yeah, technology's even uh, starting to affect my dating life. Uh, so I have a coworker, you know, he's kind of like a stud, you know, go with the ladies. And he says to me, when a girl texts you, you can't text her back for 53 minutes. Otherwise, you're going to come off as, uh, you know, too available and desperate. But apparently it's different when you're talking to a girl in person. <laughs> I was at a bar the other night and this girl said hi to me and I didn't respond to her for 53 minutes. And <laughs> now she fucking thinks I'm retarded. But uh, speaking of dating, I started thinking the other day, and I, I started actually getting a little bit angry. I was like, fellas, you know, what the fuck are we doing? You know, women have jobs nowadays. You know, they make as much money as we do. Why are we still paying for everything? What, just because it takes them 50 minutes to do their hair and face, we, they get to charge us $50? How is that fair? You know, and the messed up part is there's probably a lot of girls here thinking, what, he only intends to spend $50 on a date? <laughs> It's a big improvement for me. I had to take girls to $12 wing night. Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. 100 years ago, women didn't even have the right to vote, and now they're pretty much running the game. You know, I'm concerned to see what's going to happen another 100 years from now. If they figure out a way to procreate without us, we're fucked. Because I'm pretty sure women think we're disgusting. There's nothing we can give them that they can't get from a battery-powered Lincoln log. <laughs> and like, I hate it when like, women get mad at guys for jerking off. You know, that's like getting mad at the SWAT team for defusing a bomb. <laughs> what, would you rather we let it blow up on you? <laughs> Jeez. You know, women say we're like dogs, and you know, that's not far from the truth, because I'm pretty sure I want to hump the leg of every attractive woman I see. <laughs> Uh, so the big story in the news right now is this uh, Occupy Wall Street. And, uh, you know, I'll admit, I'm indifferent. I, you know, I, just, I don't care one way or another. But uh, I do think the protesters are lazy. You know, if you're not, you know, if you can't get a job on Wall Street, it's tough. I understand. But if you're not smart enough to learn how to cook and sell crystal meth, <laughs> I just don't feel sorry for you. There are inbreds living in trailers in Kentucky that can figure that shit out. Let's always talk about getting rid of the top 1%. We already tried that. It was called the Titanic. <laughs> it didn't work. All the rich people got on lifeboats. You know why Leonardo DiCaprio died? Because that motherfucker was poor. 
so my friends are always on my case that I'm unhealthy. And, uh, you know, I go to the doctor. <laughs> never. But it's not my fault my pediatrician stopped seeing me when I was 23. You know, he was just like, congratulations, you finally have some hair in your balls. I go out there and find a real doctor. <laughs> what the hell? Real, uh, no, no other doctors, you know, gave me butterscotch lollipops and, you know, band-aids with cartoon characters on when I was five. Why well, ruin a good thing, man? You're breaking my heart. <laughs> I've tried to eat healthy. You know, I try to stick to the five basic food groups, you know, all of which just so happen to be found on the McDonald's dollar menu. It was great. Last month, they actually had uh, Monopoly and McRib going on at the same time. <laughs> if they had busted out the Shamrock Shake, I would have ejaculated in my pants right there standing in line. <laughs> so uh, I quit smoking uh, about six months ago. <laughs> uh, cigarettes, not weed. <laughs> you know, and people ask me, do you get upset when your friends smoke around you? And uh, you know, my response to so I was like, no. You know, I want my will to be tested. You know, I believe that if you truly, you know, want to quit something, you really have to want it. Which is why I like to write free candy on the side of the car of the pedophile that lives in my building. <laughs> you know, it's one thing to say you're not going to touch children anymore. It's another thing when they run up to your car asking for candy. You know, like, I almost wasn't going to do that joke the whole Jerry Sandusky thing, but... <laughs> it's funny, you know, you're not a monster if you laugh. <laughs> Unless you're actually a pedophile. <laughs> in which case, you probably shouldn't be here. We had a Penn State pep rally. <laughs> oh, man. So, <laughs> so uh, I saw on the news the other day that this uh, kid uh, called uh, the cops on his parents and had him busted for uh, marijuana because uh, he couldn't stand the smell. You know, if that was my kid, you know, I'd sit him down. I'd be like, son, just want to let you know, I'm very proud of you for doing what you felt was right. Like, get the fuck out of my house. And good luck paying for college, narc. <laughs> uh, so I really love Google. Uh, I love everything about it. I like saying it, I like spelling it, but I realized the other day that Google is uh, slowly trying to take over the world. They even have a social networking site in uh, Brazil now that's uh, bigger than Facebook. Uh, so I started thinking, well, you know, what's Google gonna get into next? And, uh, and it came to me, porn. Yeah, they're gonna call it G-Spot. And I know what all you ladies are thinking, you know, men are never gonna be able to find it, but you're wrong, we will, <laughs> eventually. Uh, all right, you guys are great, uh, I'm James Gallagher.